So it was promised, or threatened, or <laughs> whatever action, action verb you want to use there. Let's look at some examples here. So um, this problem statement, I don't know exactly verbatim how it would read in the text, but it would say something like, uh, we have a steam turbine, which tells us water, right? So let's write down our givens here. You can write down if you like. What, what are we looking for? First thing it asks is it wants us, or no, not the first thing. What it's asking for is it wants to find the rate at which this turbine is losing heat. Okay, got an example here. Find the rate at which this turbine is, turbine is losing heat. Um, we've got a mass flow rate here of 4,500, no, 45,000, sorry, 45,000 pound mass per hour. Kind of a weird unit, okay. Um, if you like, you can just convert that, to divide that by 3,600, and that'll give you pound mass per second. That's a lot of times when I get something that's per hour, that's one of the first things I'll do. So uh, the problem would say something like this. The problem would say uh, steam, uh, steam flows steadily through a steam turbine at a rate of 45,000 pound mass per hour. Uh, the inlet pressure is 1,000 pounds per square inch absolute PSIA. And the inlet temperature is going to be 900 degrees Fahrenheit. This is an English units problem. The exit pressure is going to be 5 pounds per square inch absolute, so that's a vacuum. Atmospheric pressure is 14.7, so it's less than the atmospheric pressure. So drawing this thing as, as low as we can get it, really low pressure at the outlet. Uh, the problem statement will probably say that it is saturated vapor exiting. Now, you can write the word saturated vapor if you like. I like to write X2 is equal to 1. That tells me at the exit it's saturated vapor, 100% in the vapor phase. We only use X, the quality, if it's saturated. So anything from saturated liquid to saturated vapor, we can use an X value. X equals 1 tells me that's 100% in the vapor phase. So it's right at the saturation boiling point and 100% in the vapor phase. Uh, but if you want to write the word saturated vapor, that's just fine. Remember, this is water. It's right in there somewhere. They told me it's steam, which tells me it's water. They've given me a power output. They're saying the turbine produces work at a rate of 4 megawatts. That is the power output. Now why watts? Everything else is English units. Well, we normally don't write work or power terms in BTUs or BTUs per time. You can, but normally we use BTUs for heat. Uh, if it's a power output, we would normally use horsepower or watts, if it's, a, if it's a work, we would use foot-pounds, pound-force feet, or we'd go ahead and convert it to joules. But um, th there's nothing saying we couldn't use, and we'll convert, we'll end up converting that to BTUs uh, per time. And remember, a watt is a joule per second, so we'll need to convert that to something BTU per second, probably. And there's no conversion for watts to BTUs. There's a conversion for watts to BTUs per second or BTUs per hour, but not to BTUs. They're not the same. Okay, there's no conversion for kilograms to pascals, for example. Those are two different quantities. All right, I digress. What are we doing here? We're trying to find the heat output, or the, the rate at which heat is being um, pulled out of this thing. How do I know that? Because that's, I wrote that down, so I wouldn't forget it. I wouldn't get lost. What is a good tool? Okay, again, standard procedure. What am I looking for? What do I know? Get it all organized. Then what is a good tool or method that I could use to try to find what I'm looking for? Well, my hope is at this point a, a, a gag reflex begins to pop up of, uh, uh, Steve, it's the first law. <laughs> it's, it's an unknown energy quantity. First law deals with energy. So hopefully you've got a gag reflex that says, Steve, I need to, to look at the first law for this thing. All right, let's look at the first law. Step one for writing a first law equation Draw your system. This is a turbine. Turbine, turbine. This is a turbine. Again, a turbine. And, and what, I, what I would hope is after you read the section in your textbook about talking about steady flow devices, 
your first thought when you see a turbine is that you know this is a device that has mass in, mass out, and a power output. And you, I mean that you want to get to where you do that very quickly. You don't even think about it. This is it's, it's another gag reflex. This is a device that has mass in, mass out, and power output. Does it have a heat output? Well, the problem says it wants to know what is the rate at which it's losing heat. So we know this one has a heat output. Unless they tell you it's well insulated or adiabatic, you probably need to assume it has a heat out and see if you can solve for it. Now, if you hit a wall where you cannot solve for it, maybe assume that it's zero, but in this case they're telling you, no, I, I need you to find that heat output. Okay, so how do we write a first law equation? First step, draw your system. Second step, right, writing a first law equation. Second step is remember, this is N minus out equals change. Every first law equation looks like that. Add the N, subtract the out. So what do I have coming in? Well, I've got energy of the mass coming in, e, the rate of energy of mass coming in, that's E dot mass in. Going out, I've got three things going out, so they're all going to get subtracted. I've got the rate at which heat is being lost, Q dot out, minus the power output, which is given, minus the rate at which energy is going out through the mass, so E dot mass out. That's equal to the change. What do we know about the change? Well, I think it was given, but if it wasn't given, I think we're just going to assume that this is steady flow. What does that mean? Well, the change is DE system DT, the change in energy with respect to time for our system. If we're assuming steady flow, we're assuming that that change is zero. Okay? Now, for one inlet and one outlet, this simplifies further. Okay? So here's what I'm going to write. I'm going to grab the heat and the work, I'm going to put them over here, so minus Q dot out, minus the power out, plus, and again, if it's one inlet, one outlet, these simplify, the mass, the energy of the mass simplifies. It's a single mass flow rate because it's the same at the inlet as it is the outlet. That's the conservation of mass. We derived that earlier. And what are the quantities that we're going to worry about? I'm going to assume that there's negligible change of potential energy. That's going to be a standard assumption. You could write that down. You don't even have to write it down. I, I wouldn't count off if you didn't write that down. So the other things that we've got left then, so the other energies that can change for the mass between the inlet and the outlet, well I've got enthalpy and I've got kinetic energy. And again, this is N minus out. Steve, why is it 1 minus 2? Why isn't it 2 minus 1? Because it's N minus out. When it's on this side of the equation, it's N minus out. So it's one is the inlet, two is the outlet. And you can write in and out here if you like. That's not going to bother me. I'm just going to call them one and two. Because um, it gets really confusing when you've got multiple inlets and multiple outlets. But if you just number them, it's pretty easy. Uh, that's equal to the change. And again, if it's steady flow, the change is zero. All right. Again, how do we write a first law equation? And by the way, if this is a test problem, a huge chunk of points is going to be just writing this equation correctly. A lot of points. Um, so you want to, if, how do you prepare for an exam? Write this equation out for every, like literally go down the list of the problems in the book and write this equation out and then check it against a solutions manual or an online resource and make sure you can write this first law equation right for every single problem. If you can do that, that's going to be a huge asset. And you want to be able to do that in, in like seconds. Draw the diagram, write the equation. You don't have to go through this entire process. If you can go um, from the problem statement to here, that, that's huge. You, but you've got to be able to do that. Um, you can start with the big long equation, cross the terms out, and simplify. That's fine. This is the way I do it. Draw my system, add the ends, subtract the outs. If it's one inlet, one outlet, you can simplify to here. Okay. All right, so I've taken a really long time to get there, but seriously, when, when you're practiced, you'll get here very quickly. You've got to. You need to. Okay? All right. Um, by the way, writing this expression is one of the major learning objectives for this course. Okay? So write, being able to write this equation for anything. What do we know here? Steve, are we done? No, we're, we're trying to find the heat output. 
or the rate of heat output. That's this guy. So this needs to be my only unknown in this entire equation. All right, let's talk about what do we know here. We know the mass flow rate. That's given. We know the power output. That's given. We don't know the enthalpies. But I do know properties at the inlet. I know two properties at the inlet, and I know two properties at the outlet. Chapter 3 told us that that probably is enough to find these enthalpies. Let's assume it is for right now. So table properties will get me here. What about the kinetic energies? Well, we just talked about the kinetic energies, right? We said uh, kinetic energies, these V values, um, we had a list. What did that list say? Is it a nozzle or diffuser? Nope, not a nozzle or diffuser. It's a turbine. Did they ask for the speeds? No, they did not ask for the speeds. Are the speeds given? Nope. Can you find the speeds? Do I know the area of the inlet or the outlet? I can find the, the specific volumes of the inlet and outlet because I, I think I can find H's, so I should be able to find V's. But I don't know the areas. I do have M dot. So if I knew the areas of the inlet or the outlet, yes, I could find the speeds, but I don't. So the answer to all four of these is no. If that's the case, I'm going to assume that V1 is approximately V2, and this term is going to go away. All right. So what am I looking for? Again, I'm looking for the heat output, or the rate at which heat is going out of this thing. If I solve for that, that's going to be M dot times H1 minus H2 minus the power output. And that's your first law. We said these are knowns. Now I just need to go find properties. P1 and T1 is what's given at the inlet. That should be enough information to find H1. I'm given P2 and the fact that it's saturated vapor, the quality at state 2. That should be enough information to find H2. And I'll go look those up. We got a mender two. There's no sense in stopping the video there, but this is what I would suggest to you. Is pause the video right now and go find these properties. Seriously, go find these properties in your text. Uh, you, you, you can see this is a smaller step within this problem. So go ahead and pause. Find these properties. All right, so you got the properties. Okay, this is water. I'm in table A6. So it's, it's going to be superheated vapor. You should have already figured that out. If not, you've got to practice that. Okay. So what do we know here? Uh, 1,000 PSI A. Sorry, I, should, I thought I had this open. Okay. 1,000 PSI A, 900 degrees at the inlet. I'm doing this quickly, but it, I'm getting H1 to be 1448.6. BTU per pound mass. If you're getting something different, put it down in the comments and let's discuss. Saturated vapor at 5 psi. I'm getting H2 to be 1130.7, 1130.7 BTU per pound mass. Okay. Now it's just conversion factors, guys. I know H's, I've got the M dot value. Okay, all right, so let's move over here. Okay, so my heat rate out is going to equal my M dot. Now, um, remember, M dot we said was 45,000 pound mass per hour. You multiply that by one hour for every 3,600 seconds. 45, 1, 2, 3, divided by 3,600. I've got 12.5 pound mass per second. All right, I'm going to fill this out, and we'll start the next video there.